My name is Elizabeth Evans, and I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids, ages two through nine, and we are learning how to make joy normal. My name is Bonnie Landry, and I want to welcome you to season two of our podcast, Make Joy Normal. Um, we want to thank everybody for their support and uh, and how much you've shared this podcast with uh, your friends and those who you think it would be helpful for. Um, I am a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a grandma, I've been homeschooling for 30 years. My kids are ages 14 to 33. I only have one at home now. I'm a speaker, a writer, a blogger, and I guess we're podcasters now, Elizabeth. <laughs> and uh, I'm an advocate of joy, so welcome to our podcast. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good, yes. Good. Um, yeah, so we are uh, sort of wrapping up the homeschooling challenges for the time being anyways. Of course, we'll revisit them regularly. But one question that has been received many times is, is about sort of household order and running a household. So I think your questions were sort of around that today, right? Yes, um, we're going to yeah. focus on food and meal planning, which is uh, I think almost everybody's bread and butter, like, right? Uh, we all literally. like food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so would you, first of all, would you call yourself a foodie? Um, yes and no. Yes, except I don't love cooking. Right. So I love eating. My husband <laughs> loves cooking. So I think we kind of have a good balance. My husband right. kind of, He's not like a chef chef, but he, he will look up and research how to make something properly. Right. You okay. know, and so then he'll just like share, like tonight he shared with me a fact and he goes, did you know that you're actually supposed to salt and pep, like season your meat? Like, what did he say? A day prior to cooking it. Right. You know, like he'll just, he'll just share with me these facts. And, Random facts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I am um, not a foodie and no. I like, I, I mean, I like good food and I like wholesome food and I like local food. Like I like fresh, you know, sure. um, but the really getting into it, not, not really my game. So, <laughs> but I cook, you know, everybody likes my cooking. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter. You have somebody on. peeking in at you. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh yeah so for me it's it's primarily a utilitarian you know I want it to taste good I want it to be nutritious yeah. but it's pretty utilitarian okay. so it'll be a nice balance talking about this yeah. yeah well what's funny is the other day so this pregnancy for me has been really weird in that I'm 23 uh, 23 weeks well by the time this airs and um I have more aversions than I do specific cravings. Right. And so I think it was two weeks ago, I told my husband, I said, I know this takes you a long time, but this is all I want to eat for dinner. And he makes this homemade spaghetti sauce and it takes like four hours to simmer on the stove. Right. And it's with these <laughs> really nice meatballs that, um, weirdly have pine nuts and raisins in them and it's just mm. delicious it doesn't yeah. sound really like that would be good but it's so good and um so he made it and we made something separate for the kids because by the time this was going to be finished it was going to be like after their bedtime <laughs> but I didn't care because I just wanted night. To see yeah. and you don't want other things right right yeah so he made it and it was like the best meal I'd had in a long time. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. It's so funny when you're pregnant, how you get kind of hung up on a, a particular food. Uh, I had more aversions than um, cravings for sure. And yeah. one of my pregnancies, it was the weirdest thing. Like my aversions were um, rice cakes, like rice cakes <laughs> are basically tasteless <laughs> and, and maple syrup. And it okay. was like, Okay, why why would those two? I mean, I could see strong tasting things or sure. odd tasting things or whatever, but rice cakes and maple syrup anyway. Though. <laughs> yeah. Well, currently my major aversion is vegetables. Just the thought of a vegetable really? makes me want to gag. Yeah. And it's so wow. weird because I like to have balance for my meals. Yeah. And so it's like I can't even think of a vegetable. <laughs> We're so, so funny. Our brains are so funny. Right, right. So actually, maybe that's a good place to start during sure. pregnancy. How do you 
provide for your family when there are aversions and when smells kind of get to you. In my home, my husband just handles it all. And then I right. say what I'll eat and what I won't. But, you know, some families, the husband doesn't cook. So what, right. what, would, what would your advice be? Well, uh, a couple of things popping in my mind about just sort of management tools, but we definitely like my husband cooks a little bit, not very much, you know, he makes spaghetti and he, you know, will do the odd thing, but he's not, you know, he's not a cook. Sure. Um, and so I, you know, I'm the primary cook. So anyway, he, um, but he definitely took over during those times mm -hmm. um, because we had to, I would also just say, please pick up a rotisserie chicken on your way home from work. You know, so every day was something different, but I would just say, I couldn't cook. Could you please just do grilled cheese sandwiches? I will go out of the room while you make them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I couldn't eat if I had been smelling the cooking food. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes it takes a long time also to kind of get your, your, find your your groove in, in how you handle right. things and but I know with my later kids I would cook in the morning mm -hmm. and then all I had to do was reheat something mm -hmm. um so by the time if I cooked something in the morning when it was generally when I felt my best then I would like cool it down put it in the fridge and reheat it later you know just before supper so that I wasn't smelling a couple of hours of cooking and then wouldn't be able to eat right um and so those were a couple of tools that we used for sure. And also sometimes just really, really simplifying like burgers, you know, burgers on the barbecue. So I, this cooking smell wasn't in the house or, um, you know, like for me, something like salads, you know, like a meal salad where I could chop up meat and then it wasn't, it was the cooking smells that really got to me. Okay. Um, you know, but I would say we ate way more simply than we normally do. We normally eat pretty simply. <laughs> um but uh you know we uh also just you know had a few tools up our sleeve kind of thing that were that were helpful but cooking in the morning was definitely a really helpful thing okay yeah i know um when i was pregnant with my oldest was actually the whole reason my husband cooks now and likes it is because he had to take that on when we were first married and expecting our first and so he just right. kind of developed this love of cooking but um, he will still tell this story to this day. We were, I think we'd finished dinner or something and we're sitting on the couch chatting or whatever. And I just told him, I said, can you please go put the lettuce away? And he goes, what are you talking about? And I said, I smell the lettuce. It smells gross. Go put it away. <laughs> and there was lettuce on the counter. And so he's like, that's crazy. And then I yeah. also could smell things like like the cabinets. I mean, we lived in an apartment, so it's like right. how many people have lived in this apartment at that time. And so anyway, just the nose, the pregnancy nose. Oh, I know. You know, we were built a house when I was pregnant with my third. Um, we built a house at that time and we painted the bedroom was painted this sort of terracotta color, which I really, really love. Um, and uh, but for whatever reason, there was an association with this color in our bedroom and the smell of it right and it turned out that so and I kept saying to my husband every time we'd walk into the house as we were building it I would say I something is nauseating me so badly in this house I'm pretty sure it's that paint I don't know why I associate it with the paint maybe because it was a strong color it turned out we had a mold problem in the basement nobody else could smell it but I could smell it because I was pregnant thank goodness right yeah and so anyway finally after a couple of months you know the building process is going on and you know the finish work and all that and I said w I think we might have to repaint that basement if we can't in that, that bedroom if we can't find <laughs> the smell so we ended up having an inspector come in and there was this big mold issue in the basement but forever we lived in that house for four years and I always this I hated the paint color in the bedroom because of remembering the smell wow. like it's so it can last so long yeah that remembrance of you know that tr sort of trigger sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what's that all about? I, I don't <laughs> That's know. not about food. Let's right. get back to food. <laughs> okay. But that's a, that's a good idea to cook in the morning, you know, unless of course your aversions and your sensitivities in the morning, then that would be difficult. Of yeah, course. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's a great idea. So cook in the morning or have your spouse do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, even for, if you don't live, like we don't, always use the barbecue and barbecue season because um 
you know, it's got a side burner. Sometimes the power goes out or whatever we use our barbecue. So, I mean, cooking things outside is also a really good way of, yeah. of um, you know, kind of avoiding having cooking smells in the house. Because, you know, I mean, I could handle a few minutes of cooking smells, but often, you know, that lingering, you know, like you can yeah. smell it for days if it's something unappealing for some reason. <laughs> yes. Especially if you don't have a great exhaust fan in your kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I had, sorry, a lot of husband stories. Um, <laughs> when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, I came home from the store or something and I walked in the house and my husband was cooking a salmon burger in the skillet on our stove. Right. And I actually don't like seafood anyway, and I don't like the smell, but when I'm pre when I'm not pregnant, I can tolerate it. But when I'm pregnant, <laughs> I got so mad at him and I had to go upstairs, shut all the doors and windows. And I was locked in my room for hours waiting for this smell to dissipate. So yeah, it's brutal. Eh? It is. I yeah. wonder if there's anybody that when they're pregnant, like scents like that, you know, yeah. if we have aversions. Are there also like, I don't know, liking smells. I, it's a weird <laughs> question, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh. Okay. Well, um, I think when I was kind of thinking of questions and discussion points for meal planning, one thing I, I thought of immediately is when you have larger families, there are lots of different taste buds, right? And so right. there are things that some people like and other people don't like. I know my husband and I, and one of our sons love spicy food. The others okay. don't put it in front of them. They won't eat it and they'll complain the whole time. Yeah. So how do you deal with those kind of different taste palettes and still enjoy things that you want to eat and aren't just kid food, right? Right. Yeah. That's really interesting because I would say um, overall of my family, certainly when my kids were young, now some of my kids have become quite quite a bit adventurous with food. Um, I'd probably be the one to like unusual, more unusual things. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody else would be more bland, certainly when they were young. And, but my husband as well. So I tend to cook more, um, I don't mean my food is bland, but I, <laughs> my answer to that, and, and I'll share a couple of other people's stories because I think they're worth looking at. Um, my uh, answer to that was to cook quite plain, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, not use a lot of spices, not do anything that was very unusual. So it was potatoes or rice or pasta and, you know, whatever meat or vegetables, um, you know, I, you know, I know there's a lot of different thoughts on this and I'm not to say that this is the right way because I certainly don't think that, but I didn't, I had a couple of my kids were, had aversions to vegetables that were so strong, they would gag. Like if you tried to get them to take a bite of the vegetable, they would gag. Mm -hmm. And something just felt really wrong to me about that. So I made sure it was cooked vegetables. That was the thing. Um, so I made sure they got lots of, you know, cut up fruit, cut up vegetables, um, you know, just in their daily diet, mm -hmm. uh, you know, always put out raw vegetables with, with uh, lunch and dinner and cut up fruit with breakfast and whatnot. Um, but I just, just did not force the issue. And interestingly, you know, those people got over it and became adventurous eaters. Sure. So, you know, I mean, whatever, there's lots of, of different ways of approaching that. Um, you know, we know friends who've gotten their kids to like, okay, we have to have one bite of, of whatever's there, but we don't have to have more than one bite. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a reasonable uh, request as well. Um, but we had friends who who loved to they were both really big foodies and they loved to do a lot of kind of you know um interesting exotic type cooking they both just loved to to be in the kitchen and, and cook interesting food and so that was my question you know because they'd have us over and they'd have these you know amazing meals right um and i would say well how do you get your kids to eat that stuff right and she said well we put it out if they want it great if they don't that's fine I just always make sure I have boiled eggs and good bread on the table and so if all they eat when we have something that's you know unusual or spicy if all they eat is boiled eggs and bread once in a while I'm okay with that and I thought oh what a cool idea you know yeah. you're kind of putting out an option and, but there's something, you know, nutritious that they can have as an alternative. Oh. And um, I thought that was a really good solution for, you know, um, if you didn't, if you weren't a more um, plain cook, like I was, right. you know, and if that was meaningful to you, that, that what a great answer to that problem. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. That's great advice, actually, because my husband and I are very much the mindset of we're going to serve 
what we serve for dinner yeah. and you mm-hmm. can either eat it or not. You know, like this, if you're hungry, take some bites. We're not yeah. making a different thing for each person, you know, because right. that's just, that takes too much time. It's, you know, it, it's also not encouraging trying new things really. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I do like the idea of the boiled eggs and yeah. bread because I mean, chances are you're going to have eggs in a di- like salad dish or something else. So why not just offer it at every meal? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we always felt like if I, as long as I put out a variety of nutritious food, um, you know, then they could just pick from what they wanted. Right. And that's, mm-hmm. and that's fine. You know, now, I mean, I suppose some, a, a child could eat, you know, cucumbers, um, you know, and a boiled potato, you know, for weeks on end, but, you know, in most cases in, if we didn't make too much of a fuss about it, that they just moved beyond that pretty quickly, but kids, especially little kids kind of go in food jags. Yeah. Only eat meat, only eat cheese. They only eat vegetables. Right. Right. And I mean, you know, overall over the course of a year, they probably get all the food groups. Does it have to be every day? I don't know. (laughs) Right. There's a a children's book and I'm going to totally butcher the name. It's like peanut butter and jelly for francis oh or... bread and jam for francis yes yeah yeah, yeah. i was just gonna, i was just writing that down oh, I <laughs> mention that book do you want to tell the uh, listeners about that book sure it's, such a cute it, book, it's yeah. just about are they badgers or they're badgers yeah. yeah yeah and francis is you know the little badger and she only wants peanut butter and jam and um so her parents just that's all they offer her and right. Um, eventually she gets tired of it and wants to try the other things. And, and um, I haven't read it in a long time, so I may have forgotten things. You probably could explain it better. I, I actually just read it to my grandkids. Yeah. So, oh, really? but essentially, yeah, that's the, the crux of the story is that she will only wants bread and jam. And so they're worried about her and they, you know, start sort of discussing how they're going to handle it. And in the end, they decide, well, let's just give her bread and jam for every meal. So no matter what they have, she gets a jar of jam and a piece of bread on her plate. And, and, you know, they don't tell her she can't eat the other stuff, but they just say, oh, but we thought that's what you liked. So we wanted to give you what you liked. Right. So a couple of days of this and (laughs) she's suddenly, uh, suddenly more interested in other food. Right. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think the less we pay attention to to it you know then just sort of like okay assume it's a food jag or whatever you know and I mean I don't think there's anything wrong with saying oh why don't you just try it or you know sometimes too our kids would go like as they got a little bit older they would go to somebody else's house and they would you know feel like okay I better eat this even though it has onions in it or something that I don't eat you know or don't like um that that I'll eat this thing and they discover they actually like it it's just that they they don't want to try it you know and so they go off and they try oh I actually really like onions or I really like curry or you know whatever right right yeah my um my two-year-old actually um she's kind of growing out of it now but there were months on end where all she would eat was yogurt right (laughs) like we've spent so much money on yogurt and you know like I'll I'll get the I think it's stony field brand so it's kind of like healthier for you it's not full of all the (laughs) high-end yogurt right right (laughs) I'm I'm not trying to brag but it's just like it was concerning because all she was eating was yogurt and um, so she had had her you know her two-year checkup and I told the doctor and the doctor's like she could be eating worse things, honestly. And she looks great <laughs> and she's measuring great. So I wouldn't worry. <laughs> yeah. Don't get too excited about it. Yeah. Right. I know sometimes, well, and other things that you can do, you know, sort of slip food into things, you know, like smoothies, kids always like smoothies, right? So you mm-hmm. can put a lot of good stuff in a smoothie and know they're going to think it's a treat, right. you know, or I would make my own spaghetti sauce and I would add vegetables into the spaghetti sauce, you know, like, and just puree them, you know, and yeah. then add those in and okay fine they've got in a serving of vegetables in their spaghetti sauce right because all kids like spaghetti sauce what is that right right (laughs) and you know I thought of another story when you were talking about your kids not liking cooked vegetables and right um one of my sons years ago um because I mean we started our family in San Diego which is big Mexican food town and my husband and I love Mexican food and um so I mean we're not great at cooking authentic Mexican food. Right. But we try. And, um, so we'd have baked bean or refried beans and rice and stuff. And my son would complain, I don't like this. I don't want to eat it. And I told him, I said, just, I need you to take a bite. Right. And he took a bite and literally started gagging. And I was like, 
okay, he really doesn't <laughs> like this. So I never yeah. serve him refried beans, you know, and I know that he doesn't like beans and, um, but he will eat red beans. Um, I actually, one of the things I, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. One of the things I thought we could share, and I didn't really prep you for this. So I apologize. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> but, um, I kind of thought it would be great to share, you know, the cheapest meal that can be made and goes a long way. And it's really good. Right. And that's one thing we make is red beans and rice. And so my son okay, will eat nice. that and he loves it but he just doesn't like eh? refried beans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just never know. That's actually a really good question. Like if, if I'm going for a kind of a go-to that I'm, you know, want everybody to eat and it's an inexpensive meal would usually be soup. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, just big chunks of uh, carrot and big chunks of noodles. And if there's noodles in something, kids almost always eat it. And um, you know, or hamburger soup, you know, or just fry up a couple of cups of hamburger and um you know, then add, you know, whatever vegetables my kids like, carrots and peas and whatever, and mm-hmm. some noodles. And that always seems to be, again, it's hearty and it's, you know, it's really delicious, but it's really inexpensive as well. Right. Another Friday night meal that we used to have a lot, um, and it was something my daughter had, I don't know, had at a friend's place or something like that. It was called Costa Rican rice and beans. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, so it's basically, um, you know, beans and rice uh, and then like scrambled eggs and salsa, um and grated cheese over top and that was a really obviously a really inexpensive meal but really delicious yeah. yeah yeah well um I don't know how many of our listeners are familiar with Cameron Frad she's who connected you and I of course yes. and um so I I mean I've known Cameron for almost 10 years now I think she and I met within the year that Tim and I had gotten married and stuff and we're starting our family and she always has amazed me in her ability to literally take anything from her pantry (laughs) and make this meal that's delicious and it's healthy and kids will eat it. And, um, and one thing, if you know, Cameron, you can't ask her for the recipe because she won't know it. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's, that's how I am. I I don't ever know, you know, somebody will say, oh, this is amazing, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, really? I just threw some things together. I don't know what I did. Um, Yeah. So it's not much I use recipe for. Yeah. I envy that ability because I can't, I have to have a recipe. Um, I, I can't just throw something together. I, right. Yeah. Um, my, my mom was like that. My mom could do like, it would be, we wouldn't have any groceries in the house at all. And somehow my mom would take, you know, a can of salmon and some frozen peas and some rice and make something amazing, you yeah. know, and I don't know how she did it. Cause we often had like not very many groceries in the house and she right. was just like, okay. Yeah. But everything yeah. she tasted was, she just like had a you know, magic wand. My mother-in-law can do that too. She was visiting us in the fall and we had a couple cans of as gross as this sounds, canned <laughs> chicken. I don't remember right. why we bought it, but she took some cans of chicken and some vegetables and she made this pot pie and it was the best pot pie I've ever had. <laughs> and it was just simple ingredients and it was just everything we already had on hand. So <laughs> amazing. Um, did you, okay. Just on the topic of sort of inexpensive meals, did you have anything else that you, cause I think that's a really good, um, most of us want something that's easy and inexpensive right. and you know, um, that's right. just well, where our heart is. <laughs> so the red beans and rice, I was actually going to link, um, it's a crock pot okay. meal. So it's one of those things you start in the morning and you let nice. it go and it smells amazing. Um, and there's an option to add, um, it might be diced ham. We always do smoked sausage, but then we also will do it without any meat and it's just right. beans and rice and stuff. So anyway, um, this other one, it kind of depends, um, what you add to it. We have a, a friend's spaghetti sauce recipe that we use. Um, right. and my husband told me to share it because it's one of those meals that maybe costs a little more upfront, but it lasts like it can last right. us through two lunches, family lunches and a family right. dinner, you wow. know, so that's pretty inexpensive if you think about it. If you're getting three um, meals out of it. yeah, Right. And it uses um, pork sausage instead of ground beef, which is less expensive oh. hmm. and just really good. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, link that too. The other thing, <laughs> the other meal that we make that's pretty reasonable is, um, 
uh, shepherd's pie and I make a pretty wicked shepherd's pie. So, um, but just a little tip, I always just buy white flushed potatoes and I mash them with the skin and everything on them because it's easier, right? If I had to sit and mash, you know, uh, peel potatoes for, you know, 10 people to eat, it would be, you know, forget it. Um, but when I discovered that I can just buy the white flesh ones, which again, a little bit more expensive, but not a lot. Yeah. And then you just wash them, boil them and mash them with the skins on and um, everybody really likes it. Right. So that's always how I do mash potatoes now. We love shepherd's pie and we'll switch it up. Sometimes we do it the traditional way. And sometimes right. we use sweet potato instead of Ooh, yum. regular potato. And yeah. that's really good. Another little hint for shepherd's pie. We put red wine in the like ground beef, sure. um, you know, just to uh, add to the flavor and also um, sun-dried tomatoes. So you sort of chop those up and they go in with whatever else goes in the ground beef, you know? Okay. So yeah, depending on my budget, I would stretch the ground beef with a number of things. You know, I might add peas or peas and corn or, um, you know, chopped up carrots or onion or whatever. Like if I was trying to stretch the ground beef to make more out of it, then I would add more vegetables. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think shepherd's pie is one of those ones that makes a great leftover meal. Yeah. You know, there are certain meals. I don't know about any of our listeners, but I have a hard time reheating chicken um, right. unless it's heavily sauced or something, you know, like right. in, in an Alfredo or something. If it, it sometimes tastes too gamey for me to have leftover, right. you know, which yeah. I'm not trying to be wasteful. I have family that'll eat it, but yeah, I right. can't usually do leftover chicken, but leftover ground okay. beef. I'm yeah. With. yeah. Leftover ground beef. You know, um, so I don't know. Do you have some, are some of the questions around sort of making meal easier? Um, well, how do you make them easier? <laughs> so a couple things that, that um, we found over the years, because, okay, so the whole idea of meal planning, I'm very late to the party on this because I, I already had three or four kids and I, I started hearing things like from other moms, like we, you know, when I meal plan, I thought you plan meals because we never did that in our home. That was just you know, and so I would plan a meal at 4.30 in the afternoon, before, you know, before, oh, oh, dad's getting home pretty soon. We better think of something to eat, right? Uh, so not part of my world. So when I started hearing about this, I thought, oh, this is, wow, this is a cool idea. Not only I found you, obviously you save money when you pre-plan a bit because you can buy specials and things like that. Um, but you save a lot of time, really, because you're just not this sort of panic cooking. Um, and so we definitely uh that was something i i bought into but i also thought okay if i'm going to meal plan i'm going to plan for two meals so that i can do two nights worth of food tonight mm -hmm. and so that i only have to cook every second night right because right. that's a big time saving thing so the only thing i need to do is put it in the oven and make a salad or something mm -hmm. um so that was one of the things we did but i also sometimes went through a phase of um freezing uh, uh like freezing one making two of something and freezing one so that i might have a whole week that i don't have to cook yeah you know and um or or just easy meals for those busy days you know so that every you know couple of busy days of the month um that i can pull something out in the morning and defrost it and then pop it in the oven so it's just and there's no prep time right sure. Um, so those are a couple things. The other thing that we did quite a lot was I'd buy like, like I buy a turkey, like maybe at Christmas time when they're on special or whatever, but then I would cook it in January, pull it out, cook it. I wouldn't be a turkey dinner. I would just cook the turkey and then I would cut it all up and freeze it in freezer bags for sort of family sized meals so that I could make pasta or soup or throw it in a uh, rice and just toss it in like a, um, uh, like a rice hash or use it in sandwiches or whatever. But out of one turkey, depending on the size of the turkey, I could easily get 25 meals, okay. you know, by taking all the meat off and just popping it in Ziploc bags. And it was so easy. And I ended up doing the same thing with hamburger, just frying up tons of hamburger, you know, 10 pounds or 20 pounds and putting it in little, you know, four ounce bags or six ounce bags or, you know, one pound bags, depending on, you know, how many people I had in my house at that time. Okay. And that was really easy because then the idea of making tacos or making spaghetti sauce or whatever was so, the workload was so reduced sure. because I'd done it all in one day. Right. Okay. And so dishes are reduced, time is reduced, all that stuff. So those were really helpful things for me anyways. Okay. Um, we do actually meal plan. We, um, at the beginning of COVID, we actually would meal plan two weeks worth of groceries. So we were going to the store less. 
Right. Um, but our typical habit is planning one week's one week's worth of meals. Right. Um, and we actually we we do an Excel spreadsheet where we have what meals wow. we're having <laughs> and we write down what ingredients we need to get. Um and then we also sort of plan breakfast and lunches, not as, you know, uh, strictly, but it's more so, okay, make sure we have eggs and oatmeal yeah. stuff and make sure we have enough bread and lunch meat or peanut butter and jelly, you know? Yeah. Well, when um, I got into it, I started always planning all my meals, right? Because we're all home, you know, because we're homeschooling. So, you know, we have breakfast together, we have lunch together, we have dinner together. And for me, and the more kids I had, it just became really vital that like breakfast was, I knew what we were having for breakfast the night before. Right. right. And, um, you know, that was just a real lifesaver for me to just think, be thinking, you know, I had all the time like that. Right. Um, there's actually a really nice menu planner that I got um, a couple of years ago, I guess. Um, I will find it's a, somebody who has a, um, a blog sort of a food planning and cooking blog, and she's got some really nice free printables. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of her printables and it's like I think five different styles of menu planning worksheets that you and so it has the, your menu and then it also has um, grocery list and then it has Costco list right okay. which I like splitting it up like that because you know especially in the days when you know I had lots of people at home it, you know there was always a weekly Costco shop so you know my husband would then I could just transfer the Costco list to him and I could do the rest of the groceries you know before we all grocery shopped differently like we do in the last year right. <laughs> we actually discovered um recently sometime in 2021 um an app called whisk w-h-i-s-k and mm -hmm. it's a whole meal planning app it actually has you can upload recipes that you've found mm. from the internet. You can actually write your own recipes and then you can, you know, so let's, let's say I'm going to sit down and meal plan and I have, you know, a handful of recipes that I've already saved on this app. Right. I can just move them to my current meal plan and add every ingredient to a shopping list. And so it automatically adds the ingredients. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So then you can check off what you already have. And um, right. it saved us a lot of time. Whisk. Doing I'm that. Gonna put that in the show notes for sure. That sounds amazing. I mean, it was, probably wouldn't get much use out of it now, but <laughs> you know, back in the day I would have. Right. Um, interesting. Okay. Yeah. That would be really helpful. Yeah. We also, yeah. we've tried emails, which I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. It's a meal planning um, site that is similar in that they give you the meals, they organize the shopping list, um, and you can print it off. And they've got some great recipes and they cater to different um, dietary restrictions, you know, okay, like if you're cool. paleo or keto right. or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, we still have recipes on hand from when we were using that. Right. Well, it's interesting, you know, because um, one of the things, I mean, I don't know if an app would do this or if there is any app that does this, but the idea of using up leftovers, right? Mm -hmm. Because like a lot of times I make more than I need of something because I was, for example, a pot of rice, I would never make just a pot of rice for one meal. I would always make like triple that because maybe the next day I'm going to have fried rice and then maybe I'm going to make rice pudding out of the, the rest, but I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with the, the bulk of the rice or, or potatoes too. Like I, my family's always really liked hash. So mm -hmm. if rice or potatoes is the base and I throw in some meat and cheese or a chopped up egg or, or whatever, they really, they've always really liked that kind of meal, okay. um, particularly for lunch or breakfast. So, um, so it would be kind of fun to have a leftovers app, <laughs> you yeah. know, I have six, uh, six cups of whatever, or I have 18 egg whites or, you know, something like that, that right. uh, would help you sort of determine that. I don't know. I think I've told you this before, but every year, except obviously the last year and now probably this year, we do a Catholic homeschool camp. Mm -hmm. And so I, when I, when my husband and I and another couple took over the camp, I really wanted to um, have my, uh, uh, like be able to hire a cook right and have the meals provided for people because then it's actually a break 
Yeah. Right. Um, because meals when you're camping is, you know, kind of take just takes a very time consuming. Sure. And so that's what I ended up um, doing. And so I'd hire a cook or train a cook and I'd do the shopping and the meal planning for, you know, 100 people. Right. And it was really good for me personally, because, you know, I had nine people living at my house, but I was planning this camp for 100. So I had to be really creative in how to use up leftovers. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what we did, like, OK, every night after dinner, I would take stock. OK, there's 12 cups of rice left. There's, you know, maybe uh, six cups worth of leftover chicken. There's whatever. What can we do with this? You know, and so through the process of brainstorming, because you can't waste anything, there's just not right. any, there's no buffer for wasting money, right? Um, and so everything would have to be used and reused, you know? Right. And so it was really good for me just in my own home to sort of go through that process of like, how can I creatively do this thing? Right. right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I know when we do meal plan, we take, you know, uh, what do you call it? Pregnancy brain. I like take stock. Yes. Thank yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> of, you know what we have. Um, yeah. and that actually saves us money. Like if we buy, we've, we usually will buy a, a Costco bag of frozen chicken. And right. so we'll say, okay, so how many chicken breasts do we have left? Okay. Well, let's use right. those this week. Um, you know, do we have any ground beef left? We already have tons of rice. We have potatoes and so let's okay. make meals you know, stock, around yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then when we are buying groceries, it's not like we're buying every ingredient for every meal we've planned. Right. Yeah. So um, another thing that we did that's just, it's not along the same lines of taking stock, but not really about meal planning per se was that, so we have two deep freezes that are both, you know, like sort of medium sized deep freezes okay. and um every January and February, I would pull everything out of the deep freeze. So basically I would want to start this, you know, the season with an empty deep freeze so that I could start putting fruit and meat and, you know, whatever the things that uh, fish or whatever we got over the, you know, summer mm -hmm. in the deep freeze and, you know, like I'd buy a hundred pounds of blueberries and stuff like that. So I needed the room, but it was also really good to clean out my freezer every year and kind of at a good time when, you know, your, you know, Christmas has just happened and your budget's a little tight and, you know, you're spending more time indoors. So basically what I would do is just in kind of layers, I would go into my freezer, I would take a grocery bag, I would just kind of put whatever was on the top in my freezer I thought okay I'm going to use this this week mm -hmm. and so uh I would have to look at what I had um you know frozen and that I was thawing to to meal plan right so it sort right. of forced me down a particular road right of meal planning um you know which is actually really it was really handy and a, a habit that I developed over several years so it was it was really good I still do it now right yeah yeah wow we don't have a deep freeze but I will say we have saved a lot of money by um, getting a new refrigerator because our, you know, it's amazing how food spoiled so quickly in our old, like yeah. 20 plus year old fridge versus yeah. our brand new one. You know, it saves a lot of money over time. I'm imagining. Um, yeah. cause we would end up throwing out a lot of things, you know, it's like when we buy a week's worth of groceries and ground beef that should still be good is not good anymore. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really handy to have extra freezers and whatnot. Yeah. Um, we, when the boys, like, so when we were at the height of the amount of kids we had at home, we invested in a second fridge that yeah. we put in our garage because, um, you know, when you're buying Costco stuff, it just takes up a lot of space, right? So, you know, you have your, you know, giant half a dozen bags of vegetables and your giant thing of romaine lettuce and, you know, whatever else you have. And, and so it was just way easier to, have a second fridge you know so that we weren't things weren't getting stuck in the back or we were trying to wrestle right. through through the fridge and that was really you know we just bought an inexpensive fridge for the garage like no frills kind of thing but it was it really was helpful because um you know all the extra stuff could go in there right 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 yeah. um and then oh well we've been talking about costco a lot yeah um and i think there may perhaps be people still apprehensive about shopping at costco because it is a large price tag up front. Yeah. Um, but if you know how to navigate, you know, like for example, we, we don't browse, right. We go into Costco knowing exactly what we want. We get right. rice, we get chicken, ground beef, eggs, yeah. milk, you know, um, cereal usually too. Cause my kids go through a ton of cereal, <laughs> you yeah. know, but 
which, you know, all that combined is still very expensive, but you're also looking at it lasting, you know, some of those things two weeks or more, you yeah, know, like exactly. the chicken or something, but, um, you know, like the milk and eggs actually don't have a, a huge price tag and those are weekly things, but, yeah. you know, yeah. diapers too diapers from Costco. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we do, I hate going to Costco, but my, the town where my husband works is, is about an hour away from here. And I mean, he's been home, but he goes in once a week to sign paychecks and whatnot. So he, yeah. he makes his trip to Costco and during COVID we kind of cut it down to about once a month, but you know, there's only three of us here now. So there's actually not that many things we pick up from Costco anymore, yeah. unless I buy things and then break it into small bits and freeze, you know, like chicken thighs or something. And then I'll freeze half a dozen in a package. Sure. Right. But you know, the need to do that is, is kind of gone away in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're so many, so many less people. And I think, I don't know if I told you this last spring, but last spring I started this thing where I was as buying as much stuff just locally, like from Vancouver Island yeah. that was either grown or raised on Vancouver Island. Um, and so that was actually really fun to do that. It would have been an expensive venture, you know, back in the day when you're just right. sort of like, okay, you know, we just need lots. Um, but, but less than I thought it would be, I was surprised. Like there was a okay. couple of things that were definitely more expensive, but in terms of buying local produce, you're buying it when it's in season and it's generally cheaper, you know, right. and, um, but you know, more work involved and whatnot too, but you know, right. to sort of support your local farms and stuff, but yeah, that was a really fun venture and a really educational thing. It's something that I kind of thought would have been neat to do, with the kids when they were younger, because you actually are, you know, in some cases going to the farm and picking up, you know, whatever you're getting your eggs from here, you're getting your beef from here or whatever. Um, you know, and, and sort of seeing what your neighbors even have for sale at their, you know, a lot of people on our road have sort of driveway stands and sell oh, things yeah, yeah. from their stands, you know, so what a neat thing to do, uh, you right. know, with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you were talking about things in season and I will say that's one thing that's really hard being pregnant because actually my one craving is our berries specifically raspberries <laughs> which aren't necessarily in season right now and they're about and 25 dollars a pound yeah <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so my, my poor husband I'm like can you get more raspberries can you get more raspberries and then I covet them right you know it's like here we as parents teach our kids to share and I'm not sharing my fruit. <laughs> no, no. My raspberries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh no. I totally get it. We, um, uh, yeah, I was a couple of months ago, we did like a French dinner. And so we had this whole French menu and, you know, it was really lovely. And I met a, I made creme brulee for dessert and I wanted mm. fresh raspberries to go on top. And so I had to buy two cartons of raspberries. They were like eight bucks each or something. It was like, and I got, you know, I mean, I could count how many raspberries there were. So right. <laughs> this is right. not fair. Yeah, yeah. And frozen probably just won't do for you. Right. Those big bags of frozen raspberries. No, it's no. different, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, that's also um, pomegranates. There's, I, I really, really love pomegranates, especially on certain um, savory recipes are really right. nice. Um, but you can't find them anywhere. You know, like usually when fruit is not in season, you still have the option to buy it just at a more right. expensive, not pomegranates. There have been months where we can't get them in our town or the nearby cities anywhere. Huh? I wonder why. I, like, well, maybe, I don't know where they're native to, but. I don't either. I probably should look it up, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Want to move there. You might want to move there. Right. <laughs> um, I also thought it would be good um, to share. I don't know if you have places where you get recipes. I know you said you kind of will wing it often, but, um, yeah, I, we started off finding a lot of recipes on Pinterest kind of when Pinterest was newer. Right. Um, now it's almost harder to find recipes on Pinterest because so many people will almost just share screenshots, not the actual recipe. Right. Okay. Um, but I ended up finding this, um, Instagrammer and um she has uh her handle is half baked harvest Cute. um and i there is not a single recipe of hers that we've made that we have not loved okay um, interesting yeah and i find that's hard with cookbooks we, i'll get a cookbook and maybe use five of the recipes and right it. but no this one will use anything 
Right. And well, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not much help in that department, except there would, you know, over the years I've had different cookbooks, right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I have some really basic ones, you know, my kids are learning how to make biscuits or do quick breads or whatever. Um, but there has been one recipe book that I was given as a wedding gift that will no longer be available. And it's just really, it's really bizarre. It's called the Georgian Bay Gourmet winter entertaining and apparently there's a summer entertaining one as well so this is a book that was probably we've been married for 30 years and it was you know already out before that so it's probably 30 or 35 years old I still have my original copy which is falling apart and it's kind of themed in in dinners right yeah. so it ha it'll have a themed dinner and then you know I, I haven't made very often the actual themed dinners but I've you know a few times when I've been looking for a recipe that's where I'll go if I want to try a new dessert or you know whatever and over 30 years, I've probably tried maybe 30 or 40 of the recipes in there and have loved them all. And they're like the carrot cake that I make, the corn, my daughter's actually downstairs making cornbread right now from that recipe, you know, the cornbread that I make, everything, everything that has sort of been absorbed into our family culture comes from that book. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. But not really useful to our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that guys well maybe you can scan a few of yeah those. yeah well and maybe it's available as a used book on you know a libris or something yeah 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 i know um yeah there's actually from the half-baked harvest so she has um kind of more intricate meals but also she has a cookbook that's simple meals which is the one we use the most um but she has this carrot cake recipe and i've never been a carrot cake fan Right. But it is so good. I don't, she's just like a wizard with cooking. Interesting. And does she have recipes on Instagram sometimes? Yes. So she okay. actually has a blog. So you can okay. get almost any of her recipes on her blog. Oh. Um, she has, so with it being Lent on Fridays, we abstain from meat. And so right. a lot of her recipes um, will do more of the vegan, um, okay. you know, not not because she doesn't like meat, but just she'll, she, she just tries different right. recipes. And so there was one where it was a coconut turmeric rice and it's so good with chickpeas mm. on top. So you're getting protein and, you know, rice is filling. So it, they're filling meals. And, and would you say overall they're easy on the easy side of things like, or, or yes. you know, like, okay, that's good to know. Cause I think Usually, most moms are kind of looking for that. Yeah. Right. I think most of her recipes can be made in 30 minutes. Wow. Oh, I'll have yeah. to check her out. Yeah. yeah. And they're like gourmet meals, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes people are just wizards with flavors, right? And so that yeah. makes all the difference. Um, I'm just, we should probably wrap up, but I just want to mention the one, has anyone watched um, or have you watched the salt, fat, acid, heat? We series? have the book. We have the book. <laughs> okay. The series on, I have not read the book, but I've watched the series a couple of times now, actually on, on Netflix okay. and it's fabulous. Like, it doesn't teach you anything about cooking or meal planning or anything, right. but just this woman's excitement about food and the history of food and where things come from and whatnot is so good. She's so right. enthusiastic. Yeah. I just love her. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. husband, um, I guess we both are big Gordon Ramsay fans too. Okay. So that's how we learned to make really good scrambled eggs. Right. So. <laughs> uh okay well we should wrap it up i guess so don't forget to share this episode if you uh enjoyed it and um you know subscribe or leave us a review uh because that's how we spread the word about this particular podcast so um we'll see you next week thank you thank you